I guarantee most of you aren't even using 10% of what the Galaxy S23 Ultra cameras are capable of. And to prove it, I'm gonna show you guys over 50 unknown camera features that will unlock the full potential of your phone. Occasionally, when you take a landscape photo, you may get this icon in the bottom right corner of your gallery that looks like a stopwatch. If you tap this, your phone will analyze that photo and create a 24 hour time lapse from the single image. When you're in the gallery application, if you select a photo, then long press on an object in that photo, the phone will automatically cut out that object. And when you release the object, you'll get three options. You can copy the object and paste it into another application. You can share the object with all of your usual sharing methods, or you can save it as its own image. And if you save it as its own image, you'll see just the cutout. And at the bottom here, you'll see view original. And if you tap that, it'll take it to the original photo that the cutout came from. There's a feature that can turn super dim videos like this into super bright videos like this. To enable this, open up your camera app, then go to video, then tap the settings gear, then enable this option here called auto FPS. The way this works is it'll automatically reduce the frame rate in dark environments if things aren't moving too quickly. This allows you to get a much brighter image without the motion blur. If there's something in a photo that you don't like being there, like maybe this fire hydrant, for example, you can tap this pencil icon, then tap the three dots, then tap object eraser, and you'll get some powerful tools here. For now, I'm just gonna zoom in on the fire hydrant, then tap it, and tap erase. And just like that, it's taken out of the photo. This also works great for taking people out of the photo in case somebody photo bombs. All you have to do is tap the different people you wanna remove, then tap erase, and they're all taken out. You can also circle an entire area, then tap erase, and it'll clear all the people in that area. The object eraser is also great for getting rid of any reflections that happen when taking a picture through glass. In this case, all I have to do is tap erase reflections and you'll see all the reflections are removed. And again, here's the before. You can see my arm and the camera right here. And here's the after. The last thing the object eraser is great for is getting rid of shadows. So as you can see, there's a shadow of my arm and my body right here on top of the plants. If I just tap erase shadows, the entire shadow is erased. If you want to make it easier to take a selfie, just raise your hand in front of the camera for a second. That'll start a timer and take a picture. And if you want to learn how I got multiple pictures to be taken with a single timer, stick around because I'll be talking about that in a minute. When taking a portrait photo at night, you'll see this moon icon appear in the corner. And if you tap this, you'll be able to take a nighttime portrait photo. This will take a long exposure photo and apply the blur effect. Nighttime portraits also work with the front facing camera. It illuminates the center of the screen like a flash and takes a long exposure photo so you can get great selfie portrait shots even at night. Speaking of nighttime photos, if you go to more, then night mode, you can tap the exposure time and set that to max. This will give you up to a 30 second exposure depending on how steadily you can hold the phone and how dark the scene is. Not only does this make the image brighter, but it also gets rid of the smearing that might occur in exceptionally dark areas of the scene. Photos taken at night with the standard photo mode are tremendously bright. For reference, here's a more accurate representation of how dark it was when I took this photo. If your night photos are a bit too bright, you can darken them a bit by long pressing on the screen, then dragging this sun slider down. Or if you want to make them a bit brighter, you could drag it the other way. Alternatively, you can turn off long exposure altogether by tapping the moon icon. When the moon is white, that means long exposure is off, and when it's yellow, that means it's on. You can add the background blur effect to any photo after you take the photo. All you have to do is tap the photo, tap the three dots in the corner, then tap add portrait effect. And just like that, the portrait effect has been added. If you want to quickly make an image more vibrant, just tap the three dots, then tap remaster. This will give you a notably more vibrant image. And if you want to take this a step further, tap the pencil icon, then tap the magic wand icon in the corner. And that will not only make the image more vibrant, but it will also crop the image to give you better framing. When you're in video mode, you'll see an icon in the upper right corner. And if you tap that icon, you'll enable something called the auto framing mode, and that'll automatically track you and anyone else that's in the frame. This is great for filming sporting events or whenever you have your phone set up on a tripod. If you want an even wider angle for your videos, you can just go to your settings and disable this video stabilization feature. This allows for significantly wider shots at the cost of image stabilization. So this would be great for indoor videos where you're not gonna be moving around a lot. On the opposite side of the spectrum, you can enable super steady mode by tapping this icon here. This will reduce your viewing angle in order to create remarkably steady shots. Here's a running shot with all image stabilization turned off. 
Here it is with regular video stabilization. And here it is in super steady mode. And as a bonus, super steady mode now supports QHD resolution at up to 60 frames per second. On last year's Galaxy S22 Ultra, you're limited to full HD at 60 frames per second. You can use your camera to save a ton of money just by aiming it at this QR code. That will scan the code and give you a little link. And if you tap that link, it'll take you to a deal where you can get any phone plan from my partner Mint Mobile for just $15 a month for the first three months. And that includes the unlimited plan. If you aim your camera at a business card or a document, you'll get this yellow outline that appears. And if you tap the T icon in the corner, it'll take a cropped image of the card or document. You can then drag these circles to line up the corners perfectly. And once it's lined up, tap save. And that will save a cropped version of the image. From here, you can tap on the image, then tap this T icon in the corner, and you'll be able to extract any text from the image. Not only that, but if you tap on a phone number, you'll be able to immediately call that number. If you tap on an address, you'll be able to immediately navigate to that address. And if you tap on a web address, like this exclusive link to that Mint Mobile deal, you'll be able to jump right to that web page. And by the way, I switched over to Mint Mobile long before they ever became a partner. And in the past eight months, I've saved a tremendous amount of money on my phone bill. I was able to transfer over my existing phone number as well as my existing unlocked phones. And I've had no issues with data speeds or coverage in my area. So while I turn down about 100 sponsorship opportunities a month because I can't fully stand behind those products, Mint Mobile is a company that I can easily stand behind based on my own experience. If you want to take advantage of this limited time deal, go ahead and scan the QR code or go to mintmobile.com slash techisode or click the links in the description and pinned comment. And if you miss the current deal, check back often because that link will still work for all future deals as well. If you go to the more menu in the camera app, you'll see an option called a portrait video. And if you tap that, you'll be able to apply the portrait effect to a video. And with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, you can now do this in 4K resolution with both the front and rear facing cameras. Not only that, but you still get access to this little menu right here. If I tap this, I can switch between the four different blur effects. And I also get access to this little bar right here where I can increase or decrease the amount of blur. The one caveat with this is that it doesn't always work perfectly and you can't remove the effect once it's applied. So I wouldn't recommend using this for something really important like a child's first birthday. If you go to your camera settings, then scroll down a bit, you'll see an option called tracking autofocus. If you enable this, then go back to your camera, you'll be able to tap on an object and that'll put a yellow box around the object to start tracking it. And the purpose of this is to keep that object in focus at all times. And as you can see, it does an incredible job of tracking the controller. And this will even continue to track when you switch zoom levels. And in case you're wondering, this even works in video mode. If you notice that your skin tone is a bit off when taking selfies, you could tap this wand icon in the corner, then tap color tone. And on the other side, you can change it from natural to warm to see if that helps. If you're taking pictures of something, then suddenly want to start recording as quickly as possible. All you have to do is hold the shutter button and that'll start recording a video. From here, you can then swipe in towards the lock icon and that'll lock you into video mode and allow you to use all the different zoom levels. From here, you can also switch back and forth between your front and rear facing cameras, take pictures while filming the video, turn your flash on to help light the area, pause or resume the video, and of course, stop the video. The one caveat when filming a video like this is that you'll be left with more of a square shape for the video and you'll also be limited to 1920 by 1440 resolution. So if you wanted to film at 4K, you will need to switch to the regular video mode for that. Just as a quick reminder, if you wanna get a great deal on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, I have affiliate links with the latest deals in the pinned comment below. So if you wanna save some money while also supporting the channel, using those links is a great way to do it. The next thing we're gonna do is unlock a powerful hidden camera menu. To do this, we need to go to the Samsung Galaxy Store. Make sure you go to the Galaxy Store and not the Google Play Store because this is only available on the Galaxy Store. Once you open up that application, you're gonna search for an application called Goodlock. And you'll wanna install the one made by Goodlock Labs. This is Samsung's official application and anything else with a Goodlock name is not made by Samsung. Once you've downloaded the application, go ahead and open it. And you'll be met with this screen here. 
and you'll see that there are a ton of different plugins that you can install. And each one of these plugins adds a ton of different functionality to your device. And it would take a good one to two hour video for me to cover everything that these can do. Obviously, we don't have time for that in this video. So instead, just jump over to the life up section where you'll see a bunch of other plugins, scroll all the way to the bottom, then back up a little bit, and you'll find the plugin we want right here called Camera Assistant. Go ahead and tap to select it, then tap Install. Once it's installed, you can go to your camera, tap the settings gear, and scroll all the way down, and you'll see this new option here called Camera Assistant. And this is where you get a ton of powerful features. You get this Auto HDR feature, which automatically enables high dynamic range to get you more details in the bright and dark areas of your pictures and videos. You get picture softening, which helps hide blemishes on your face. And for reference, here's a side-by-side -side picture with softening turned off versus turned on. As you can see, some blemishes are hidden, but at the cost of sharpness. You get the option to disable the auto lens switching feature. And this is a feature where your phone will automatically decide which lens to use based on your current zoom level, the lighting, and the distance from the thing you're taking a picture of. And I've tested this with and without this feature enabled, and I can definitely say that Samsung software does a much better job at picking which camera should be used than I can, so I recommend leaving this enabled. Quick tap shutter is great if you wanna take faster pictures. What this does is take the picture as soon as your finger touches the shutter button, instead of waiting for your finger to come off the shutter button like it normally does. Prioritizing focus over speed will make your shots less blurry by waiting a little bit until everything is perfectly in focus before taking a picture. The downside of this is that there may be a delay between when you touch the shutter button and when the picture is actually taken. Capture speed is another excellent feature that allows you to prioritize different things. When taking pictures at the standard resolutions, you get the option to prioritize quality, balance speed and quality, or prioritize speed. So if you're just looking to get the best pictures, you'll want to keep it on prioritize quality. But if you're taking pictures at something like a sporting event, you want to switch to prioritizing speed so you don't miss those action shots. When taking pictures with the high resolution at 200 megapixel camera on the S23 Ultra, you can choose between a faster capture or a faster post-processing speed. In my experience, faster post-processing seemed to give slightly sharper images compared to faster capture, but faster capture certainly allows you to get pictures much quicker so you don't miss a moment. Video recording in photo mode is the feature I showed you earlier where you could just long press the shutter button to start recording a video. This is on by default, but you can disable that if you'd like. Timer multi-photo options is the feature I showed you guys a bit earlier where I took three pictures with a single timer. As you can see, you can choose between one, three, five, and seven pictures taken with a single timer, and you could change the interval between those pictures from one second all the way to three seconds. This is a tremendously useful feature when trying to get group pictures, especially if you have little kids like I do. Camera timeout is the amount of time that the camera is going to stay open if you're not doing anything with the camera application. The default is two minutes, but if you're gonna be setting this up on a tripod for extended use, the 10 minute option might be beneficial. Dim screen while recording, again, would be really useful if you had your phone set up on a tripod and were filming something really long. By having the screen dim after a minute or two of no input, you could save a substantial amount of battery life and be able to record for much longer. And clean preview on HDMI displays is more for professionals who want to connect an external display to their phone. This just allows them to see a preview of what the camera sees without all of this stuff at the top and bottom of the camera preview. When you're in the camera app, you can go to settings, then scroll about halfway down until you find an option here called grid lines. If you enable this, it'll add a grid to your photo preview. This makes it a lot easier to line up your shots. For example, if you line up a person's eyes with the top horizontal line, instead of centering the person in the shot, you'll generally get a better picture. And one other thing the grid lines do is add a dot on your screen whenever you're aiming your camera down. And if you line up the circle around that dot, that's how you know you'll have the camera facing straight down. This is particularly useful for taking pictures of things you want to sell online, or if you're taking a picture of a document. You can take your picture taking abilities even further by going to settings, then enabling something called shot suggestions. This will use artificial intelligence to figure out the best way to line up your shots and add a dot on your screen to show you where to aim your camera. This is a picture of a zebra taken with the Galaxy S23 Ultra's ultra wide camera. And while you probably can't see it now, if I zoom in a bit, you can see it a little bit right there. Now, obviously, if you're taking a picture of a zebra, you're gonna wanna zoom in a bit more. So you could use the Galaxy S23 Ultra's 10 times zoom, or you could use the 30 times zoom and get even closer. But if you really wanna see all the details, you can use the Galaxy S23 Ultra's 100 times zoom and see all the details of the zebra from incredibly far away. And the fact that you can get this much detail from this far away is insane. And for one more quick example, 
Here's a 100 times zoom shot taken of the moon with the Galaxy S23 Ultra. For some perspective, here's the best picture I could get out of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And if you haven't seen my controversial video on Samsung's moon photos, you can check that out by clicking the card above. If you pay for extra storage with Microsoft's OneDrive, you'll definitely want to jump in your gallery application and tap the three lines at the bottom, then tap Settings, then enable Sync with OneDrive. This will automatically back up all the photos you took with your Galaxy S23 Ultra right to your OneDrive account. That said, I don't recommend enabling this if you only have the free version of OneDrive, which only gives you five gigabytes of storage. If you're ever traveling abroad and need to quickly translate some text, all you need to do is open up your camera app, go to the More option, then select Bixby Vision at the top, then select this Translate option at the bottom, and you'll be able to translate all of the text in real time. Besides translating text, you could also go to the text option and use that to quickly copy text from within an image. And this would be great for something like copying coupon codes into a web browser. And if you tap the discover option, Bixby will take a picture and try to figure out what that object is. And if I scroll down just a bit here, you can see that the first option is correct because this is the MetaQuest Pro. And if you missed my deep dive review of the MetaQuest Pro, you can check that out by clicking the card above. If you're in video mode and tap the resolution, you'll see that you can now film in 8K at 30 frames per second. Previously on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you could only film at 24 frames per second, which was sometimes a bit jittery. So at 30 frames per second, you get a super smooth video. Here's a sample of an 8K video, obviously downscaled to 4K for this video, but still the detail is incredible. Just keep in mind that 8K video does take up a lot of storage, so I wouldn't have this set as your default. And if you want to know how I was able to smoothly shift focus from one object to another, stick around because I'll be showing you guys how to do that in a little bit. You can take amazing photos of the stars or even get a time lapse of the stars in both a standard and star trails mode. And the fact that you can get images and videos like this from a smartphone is just astounding. To do this, jump into the camera app, then go to more, then expert raw, and tap this constellation icon in the corner. When you do this, you get the option to see a star guide, which shows you where all the different constellations are. And as you can see, it adjusts accordingly as you move your phone around. But if you'd prefer, you can hide the star guide. You can also change the duration of the photo from four minutes all the way out to 10 minutes. And obviously, since this is gonna be such a long exposure, you'll definitely need to have your phone set up on a tripod to have this work well. To get a time-lapse of the stars, go to more, then hyperlapse, then tap this icon in the corner, and switch that to the 300X option with the star icon. You'll also want to make sure that you're set to UHD resolution for the best quality. Then tap this time icon and set that to infinity. This will make sure that the time lapse continues as long as you'd like. And this star icon in the corner is how you enable star trails. So if it's yellow, you're going to get star trails. And if it's white, you're not going to get star trails. You can take a 200 megapixel picture by going into photo mode, tapping this 4x3 option and selecting 200 megapixel. This is excellent for taking landscape or city shots where you want to be able to zoom in later and see a lot of detail, or even for taking pictures of a map that you need to look at later. At 200 megapixels, you'll be able to see all the details of that map. When you bring your camera closer to an object, you may notice that it starts to get blurry. But if you tap this little icon in the corner, you'll enable something called a focus enhancer, which switches the cameras automatically to help you get the best focus. And this allows you to get much, much closer to an object. So much so that the Galaxy S23 Ultra takes some of the best macro photos I've ever seen on a phone. Here are just a few samples to show you guys just how good this is. And by the way, people always ask about this case when it's in my videos. So if you want to learn more about it, you can check out my dedicated video on it by clicking the card above. Samsung's super slow motion mode, which records at 960 frames per second and lets you play the video back 32 times slower than real life, just got a massive upgrade. Not only can it now record at 1080p, which is double the resolution compared to last year's S22 Ultra, but it also gets a significant improvement in low light performance. To get to this, go into your camera app, then go to more and select super slow-mo. You also get the option to turn the flash on for better lighting. And you have the option to either manually start a recording or if you tap this icon in the corner, you'll get this little box here and it'll automatically start recording when motion is detected within this box. This box can be moved around to different parts of the screen and even resized. And this automatic recording option is really important because you only get about one second of record time once you hit that record button. So having it start automatically is a great way of making sure you don't miss your shot. If you use one of the modes in the more section frequently, you can just long press the mode and drag it down to the bottom to have quick access to it. You could also rearrange the modes down at the bottom by dragging them around 
or if there's a mode that you don't want at the bottom, you can long press it and drag it back up into this menu. And when you're done making your changes, just tap save. If you go to the camera settings, then swipe all the way to the bottom, you'll see this option called settings to keep. And if you tap this, you can choose which settings to keep active when you close and reopen the camera app. So if you prefer to always open up the camera app in video mode, you can enable this camera mode option, then select video mode in the camera. So now if you leave the camera app, then close out of it, then reopen the camera app, you'll still be in video mode. And this also works for keeping your selfie angle settings, your picture resolution settings, your filters, whether or not super steady mode is enabled, and even your portrait zoom. If you want to make it easier to hold your phone while taking pictures, just drag the shutter button towards the middle. Now you can move it around wherever you'd like. And this allows you to get a much more secure grip on your phone versus something like the usual claw grip. Now this feature is not on by default. To enable it, just go to settings, then scroll down until you see an option called shooting methods and tap that. Then enable this feature here called floating shutter button. You probably already know that you could take a picture with your S Pen by just pressing the S Pen button, but you might not know that you could switch cameras by holding the S Pen button down and swiping up, switch modes by swiping left or right, or zoom in by drawing a clockwise circle while holding the S Pen button, and it'll continue to zoom in as long as you hold that button. And you can obviously zoom out by drawing a counterclockwise circle. And again, whenever I release the button, it'll stop zooming out. And if you ever forget what the gestures are, you can just hover your S Pen over the Air Actions icon, and you'll see a list of all the shortcuts. And you can even change these shortcuts by tapping the Air Actions icon, then tapping the pen at the top, then tapping one of the shortcuts. Now just tap the function you want, and you're done. If you want to see a bunch more incredible S Pen features, you can check out my dedicated video on the S Pen by clicking the card above. If you took a picture and accidentally had some sensitive information in it, like a credit card number, then you went to share that image, you'll get a warning telling you that that image may contain sensitive information. If you zoom in past 20 times zoom, you'll see a box appear in the corner. When this box turns yellow, it means that your shot is being stabilized to make it easier to get a crisp image. This also makes it a lot easier to track moving objects that are far away. When you zoom in on a photo, you'll see an icon appear in the corner. And if you tap it, you can quickly crop that image to that size and save a copy of it. So now if I swipe over, I can see the cropped version. You can also do this with video. Just zoom in to wherever you'd like, scrub across until you find the frame you'd like to capture, then tap the icon and a screenshot will be saved. And this is especially useful for taking screenshots out of 8K videos because a single frame from an 8K video is a 32 megapixel image. If you long press the camera app icon, you'll get a few different shortcuts. And if you long press one of those shortcuts, you can drag that shortcut down onto your home screen and keep it there permanently. This is excellent if you frequently take selfies, portraits, or record videos instead of using the regular camera. These shortcuts allow you to jump straight into that camera mode and save you a little bit of time. If you tap the More option while you're in the camera app, you'll see another option called Director's View. And if you tap this, you'll be able to record with both the front and rear facing cameras at the same time. And this is something I did just recently at the zoo so I could see my one-year-old's reaction to the animals he was seeing. You also get a lot of customization options with this mode. For starters, you can move that camera preview around wherever you'd like, and if you double tap the preview, you'd be able to make it bigger or smaller. And by default, this video is going to save with the camera preview exactly as it's shown. So you see both the rear camera and this front facing camera at the same time. But if you tap this middle icon here, you can save it as two separate video files. And if you tap this arrow on the side, you'll be able to see your other three cameras, and if you tap those, you can switch to those different cameras. However, you cannot pinch to zoom in this mode. And if you tap this rotation icon next to the record button, you'll be able to switch the front and rear cameras. So now the front facing camera is going to be large and the rear facing camera is going to be small. And if you tap this other icon in the corner, you'll be able to switch to a split screen view instead. And in case you're wondering, tapping that rotation icon while in split screen view will just switch which side the preview's on. When you go to the more menu, you'll see two different pro modes. You get a pro camera mode, and this gives you manual control over things like your focus, white balance, exposure, your shutter speed, and even your ISO. And that's all pretty useful, but if you back out of here and go back to the more menu, then go to pro video mode, this is where the magic happens. If I scroll up on the right here, I get this zoom option, and this lets me zoom in and out at a constant rate depending on how far I drag the slider. The mic option lets me choose which microphone I want to use. So if I have a Bluetooth headset connected, I could use that as the microphone. I could use a USB microphone, or I could use a Bluetooth headset and the camera's microphones at the same time. 
I can choose just to capture audio coming towards the back of the phone, just audio coming towards the front of the phone, or audio from both the front and rear. And this bar here lets me increase or decrease the audio levels. The focus option is incredible because I can drag this bar on the side and slowly rack focus from things that are really close to things that are really far. And this gives a much more cinematic look to your videos. Because if I just used tap to focus, it would quickly jump back and forth between the two different objects. And you also get the settings you would expect from a pro mode like white balance adjustments, exposure, shutter speed, as well as the ISO value. And if you changed a bunch of settings and want to go back to the default settings, you can just tap this little reset option here and that resets all of your settings. In the corner, you'll see your left and right audio levels. And in the other corner, you'll see this little icon here. If you tap this icon, you'll be able to see a histogram. And even at 8K, I still get access to all of these controls. And when you're filming in lower resolutions, you'll get this option in the corner. And if you tap this, you'll be able to change your contrast, highlights, shadows, saturation, and even your tint in real time. And all of those effects will be applied as you're filming the video. And if you want things to look even more cinematic, you can change the aspect ratio to 21 by nine. So if you want the best possible video out of the Galaxy S23 Ultra, or if you want to get a really cinematic video, you'll definitely want to try out Pro Video Mode. If you want to quickly take a burst photo, just drag the shutter button down and hold it there as long as you'd like. And this allows you to take up to 100 burst photos. And when you go to review your burst photos, if you tap this icon in the corner, you can go through each and every photo and select your favorite one. Once you found the one you like, tap the photo, then tap the crown icon, and that will be the photo that's previewed. If you switch to video mode, then go to the camera settings, you'll see an option here called advanced video options. And in here, you'll see an option at the bottom called 360 audio recording. What this does is allow you to capture audio in 360 degrees. That means that when you play the video back with headphones on, you'll be able to tell if something is in front of you, behind you, above you, below you, or to the sides. Besides enabling this feature, you also need to connect a pair of Galaxy Buds 2, Galaxy Buds Pro, Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, or newer Galaxy Buds to your phone. And once you have your Galaxy Buds connected, you'll see this 360 mic text in the corner, letting you know that you'll now be recording with 360 degree audio. And while I can't fully demonstrate the 360 degree effect in this YouTube video, have a listen to how good the sound quality is of the rain hitting my hood in this video. If you back out to your main albums page, then tap the three lines at the bottom, then tap shared albums, then tap get started, you get an option here to create a family album. If you select this, you can create a shared album with your family and each person you add to that album adds an extra five gigs of storage to the entire album. This is incredibly useful if you're going on vacation with family and you want everyone to have access to all the pictures everyone took. You could just have everyone move their pictures from the vacation to that shared album. Then you could each download the full resolution videos and images to your own phones. If you go to the camera settings, then scroll about halfway down, you'll see an option called location tags. This will add location information directly into your photos and videos. And if you have this enabled, then go to your gallery and then tap these three lines right here. You'll be able to sort by location and see all the pictures taken at specific locations. You can select images and videos much faster by long pressing then dragging in either direction. And you can also do this to deselect photos and videos as well. If you have multiple photos and videos selected, then tap the three dots, you can change the location for that entire group of photos. And if you tap this create option, you'll be able to create a highlight reel from all of the videos and images you selected. If you do this, your phone will automatically figure out what the best parts of all of the images and videos are and put those together in a short video. So if I tap play on this, you'll see that it starts with part of a video, then after a couple seconds, it's gonna to switch to some of the images. And there's also some background music that plays as well. Tapping this play icon at the bottom allows you to long press and move the images and videos around. And you can also change the aspect ratio with this button here. So you can keep it in a portrait orientation or switch to landscape orientation. And you have a few different aspect ratio options at the bottom as well. If you tap this center icon, you'll be able to add an intro title to the video. And if you tap this music icon, you can change the background music volume, the overall video volume, and even choose different background music. The last option is to add a filter to the video. 
If you thought these features were incredible, check out this video here where I show you guys the top 25 basic yet powerful Samsung features that most people don't even know. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications because there's more deep dive Galaxy S23 Ultra coverage coming up real soon. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.